Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. First, I would like to acknowledge my subscribers. Your support is invaluable and goes a long way to help the channel grow. Thank you for subscribing and stay tuned for more tech content. If you're new here, I appreciate you as well for taking time to watch the video. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more tech reviews. Today, we are going to review this recently released M4 Mac Mini by Apple. It is a tiny computer that not only packs a punch, but arguably provides the best value in regard to price to performance. Launched in early November, the M4 Mac Mini has made a significant impact on the consumer computer market. Today, I'll break down everything you need to know about it. What we have here is the base model M4 that I've been using for about three weeks now. Out of the box, it only comes with this 1.8 meter long, two prong braided power cable. Under the hood, this base Mac Mini M4 is equipped with 16 GB of RAM and 256 GB of storage. It is priced at 599 US dollars, but students can grab it for as low as 499 with a valid student email. This base model is powered by the 10 core CPU and 10 core GPU. The 10 core CPU is divided into four performance cores and six efficiency Cause. Apple also sells a similarly sized M4 Pro Mac Mini that comes with a minimum of 24 GB of RAM and 512 GB of storage. The M4 Pro base version, which retails for about 1,400 US dollars, is powered by a 12 core CPU and 16 core GPU. The 12 core CPU is divided into 8 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores. Now, since the base M4 Pro Mac Mini has twice as many performance cores as our M4 base version, real-world tests show that it is almost twice as powerful as this base version. All Mac Mini models can be customized with upgrades on Apple's website at the time of purchase. Since Apple tends to charge a premium for these upgrades, the value for money significantly diminishes with every upgrade. Back to our base model M4 Mac Mini. As you can hear, the M4 Mac Mini casing is made up of aluminium. The dimensions of the device are compact, measuring just 5 inches by 5 inches in width and length, with a height of only 2 inches. I have placed my typically sized phone next to it so that you can readily get an idea of the size of this Mac Mini. I mean it can easily fit into the palms of my hand and so it's essentially a very tiny desktop computer that won't take much of your desk space. Let's quickly go through the I.O. On the front of the M4 Mac Mini, you will find two USB-C ports supporting speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second. These are USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports. On the far right, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and an LED power indicator. At the back, the setup includes an AC power connector, a gigabit Ethernet port, an HDMI 2.1 port, and three USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are capable of transfer speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second. The sides of the device do not have any other ports. Additionally, the M4 Mac Mini is equipped with Wi-Fi 6E for faster wireless connectivity and Bluetooth 5.3 for improved device pairing and performance. For reasons that remain unclear, Apple chose to put the power button at the bottom of the device. And as if that's not bad enough, they put it at the back. I mean, why? In what world does this make sense? While some may argue that most users put the Mac Mini to sleep rather than fully powering it down, placing such an essential control under the device seems like a questionable design choice. Lifting the device to turn it on feels counterintuitive and impractical. It's another example of Apple's tendency to spark debate with unconventional design decisions. Moving on from the rant, the ventilation is placed at the bottom plate, which is made of plastic. You can connect the Mac Mini to external monitors using either the HDMI 2.1 port or any of the three Thunderbolt 4 Type-C ports located at the back. 
The maximum number of displays supported by this base model Mac Mini is detailed on Apple's website. Here's a screenshot. Feel free to pause and read for specific configurations. In my setup, I have connected the Mac Mini to two 27-inch 1440p monitors, each with a 144Hz refresh rate, using two of these braided Ugreen Type-C to HDMI cables. I'll include a link in the description if you are interested in getting one of these cables for yourself. However, it is worth noting that due to macOS scaling, items on 1440p displays appear slightly fuzzy or blurry. Interestingly, when using Parallels desktop to run Windows on the Mac, the text on the 1440p displays appears sharp as expected. Here's a comparison of a Google search page in macOS above and Windows below. You can see that the fonts in macOS are bolder but less sharp compared to the more refined text rendering in Windows. So, if you are planning to use Parallels desktop to run Windows on the M4 Mac Mini, scaling will not be an issue in Windows on the virtual environment. If you want sharp and crisp tests on macOS, consider using a 1080p monitor, a 4K monitor, or an Apple native 5K display for optimal clarity. To illustrate this, I connected the Mac Mini to a portable 1080p monitor with a 144Hz refresh rate. The 1080p monitor displays macOS beautifully. The text appears sharp and clear with no fuzziness. There are plenty of YouTube reviews showcasing benchmark performance for the base model M4 Mac Mini, but we don't do that here. To give you an idea, the M4 chip generally outperforms typical Intel Core i7 laptop processors. My existing Windows workstation runs on a Ryzen 9 3950X processor and an NVIDIA GTX 1080 GPU. It is an outdated system, but it still performs excellent when using heavy softwares like ArcGIS Pro, AutoCAD, and Adobe Photoshop. My only gripe with it is that it continuously consumes about 170 watts of power when in use. In contrast, this M4 Mac Mini draws about 30 watts of power, thus about 140 watts less than the old workstation. When using the Mac Mini, I have to use Parallels Desktop to run some of my Windows-only programs like ArcGIS Pro. In the virtual environment, performance on the Mac Mini feels slightly slower than the old PC. It is definitely not as snappy as the Ryzen 9 Windows computer. However, softwares like Photoshop that run natively on macOS appear to have the same snappy feel as the Windows system. This base M4 Mac Mini is not designed for gaming, so testing its gaming performance seemed unnecessary. Other reviews have shown that in order to achieve 60 FPS in modern AAA titles and on 1080p resolution, you often need to lower the quality settings, which in my opinion indicates subpar gaming performance. For gaming, it is more practical to opt for a gaming console instead. The M4 Pro version offers slightly better gaming performance, but still heats up quickly and throttles heavily under load. Therefore, if gaming is your main focus, it is better to go for a dedicated gaming PC or a console. During normal operation, like web browsing, word processing, and watching videos, the Mac Mini is super quiet. The temperature hovers between 45 and 60 degrees Celsius, while the fan is limited to 1000 RPM. However, in intensive workload like rendering motion graphics in Adobe Premiere, the CPU temperature throttles at over 105 degrees Celsius, and the fan ramps up to 2800 RPM, which is quite loud, almost as loud as a maxed out laptop fan. Here are some of the pros and cons of this 2024 Mac Mini. Let's start with the pros. It is a highly capable computer handling both light daily tasks and demanding workloads like video editing with ease. It executes the heavy tasks silently and efficiently. Another pro is that its compact and lightweight design makes it ideal for travel, allowing you to set up temporary workstations in places like hotel rooms or shags during the holiday visits. However, for such setups, you will need a portable monitor like this Azopa Z1 FC, which will be reviewed in an upcoming video. Subscribe to stay updated. Finally, the Mac Mini's cost to performance ratio is exceptional. 
arguably making it Apple's best Mac to date. Comparable Windows mini PCs with similar performance are priced at around $1,000, nearly double the cost of this Mac mini. Now, let's move to the cons. With just 256 GB of storage, you will likely need an external drive for additional space, as the internal storage fills up quickly once you start using the computer. Secondly, the poorly positioned power button can be inconvenient, especially if the Mac Mini is placed under a monitor stand. While it's a design shortcoming, you can work around it by putting the Mac Mini to sleep instead of shutting it down. In the three weeks of use, I noted that during sleep, the Mac Mini disconnects some peripherals like wireless mouse dongles and USB drives. Bluetooth peripherals, like my keyboard, are not affected. If you're considering getting one of these Mac Minis, consider getting Bluetooth peripherals as well. This is my final takeaway. I'm particularly impressed how this compact device managed to handle my daily computer tasks while consuming 30 watts of power, showcasing the brilliance of Apple Silicon. It far surpasses similarly priced or even more expensive mini PCs in performance. I appreciate you for watching this video to the end. If you'd like to catch an upcoming review of the OWC 1M2 Thunderbolt 4 enclosure that I plan to use to expand the storage of this base M4 Mac Mini, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications to be alerted when the video is uploaded. Thank you and cheers.